The headline, Tinubu set to compete with Russia on gas supply to Europe. Former World Bank President comments President Tinubu economic policy. Petroleum market of Reveal plans to roll out cheap fuel at 100 naira per litre. Nigerian TV show host Ebuka interviews former world's richest man, Bill Gates. Hello and welcome to GNTV Weekend News. I am Anase Awebiak. President Tinibu promised to, to compete with Russia in supplying gas to Europe, adding that he did not care what the largest country in the world will say. Within three weeks of resuming office as Nigerian president, Bola Tinibu began the move to realize his ambition and fulfill his campaign promises. On Friday, June 16th, which made it exactly 19 days since Tinibu took the oath of office as president of Nigeria, the West African country entered a Memorandum of Understanding MOU with at least five African countries. The deal, according to the source, was stacked 30 billion U.S. dollars Nigeria-Morocco gas pipeline project, and it was at the headquarters of the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. Nigeria entered the deal with five African countries separately through the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL. The countries involved in the deal are Morocco, Ivory Coast, Liberia, Benin Republic, Republic of Guinea. President Tinibu, in one of his engagements with the business community in Lagos during his campaigns in the 2023 presidential election, tagged business lunch with Asiwaju in Lagos, urged European countries to spare some money from going to space and invest in gas supply from Africa, particularly Nigeria. The then presidential flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress, APC, said, I don't care about what Russia will say. I want to compete. President Tinibu also reiterated his commitment to ensuring that Nigeria competes with Russia in supplying gas to Europe in Ondo State when he met with the chairman of the Ondo Council of Traditional Rulers, Dedeji of Akure Oba. Alade Toyibo, Alade Lucy. The former president of the World Bank, Davis Malpass, has lauded the economic strategies employed by President Tinibu since the assumption of office. Malpass made this assertion on his official verified Twitter page to express his appreciation for Tinibu's decisive actions aimed at abolishing Nigeria's detrimental government subsidy and multiple exchange rates. Since assuming the presidency, Tinibu has implemented a series of reform measures, with most prominent one being the removal of fuel subsidies. Senator Kashim Shatima, the vice president, recently faced several criticism following his statement a few days ago. He suggested that it will be more appropriate for the West Christian rather than a Muslim to assume the position of Senate president during the tussle of who will emerge the Senate president. In response to the backlash, the vice president publicly apologized to the Islamic community in Nigeria, who frowned at the statement. In his apology, Senator Shatima emphasized his unwavering devotion to Islam and explained that he cannot compromise his faith at this point in his career due to his ancestral roots. He clarified that his earlier statement was made within the context of highlighting the presence of a Muslim president and vice president and his belief that Muslims should not hold the additional position of Senate president. He earnestly sought forgiveness from the Muslim community and assured them that he will refrain from making such remarks in future. The Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN, has said it is ready to roll out cheap fuel for Nigerians. 
the association's chairman, Chinedu Okoronkwo, said the body will start to roll out compressed natural gas at 100 naira per litre. He said the association is almost ready with its plan to cushion the effect of subsidy removal on Nigerians. Motorists and transport operators in Nigeria will witness relief soon after the Nigerian government ends the petrol subsidy, which caused a spike in the product price across the country. The Ibman president further revealed that the association is 90% ready to roll out compressed natural gas CNG as an alternative fuel which will sell between 100 to 110 naira per litre before the end of June. The Nigerian president has approved the reopening of the semi border to allow the importation of vehicles and other goods from neighboring West African countries. This was stated by the director of road transport in the Ministry of Transportation, Ibrahim Musa, on Wednesday at the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. Musa said the development followed compliance by freight forwarders operating at the semi border. The director was quoted by saying, I was here with the former Minister of State for Transportation when the freight forwarders pleaded that the border should be reactivated for the free movement of goods and services. The former minister made us prepare a memo to that effect. It was considered and sent to the government. Also speaking, the Custom Area Controller of Semi Border Command, Dara Nadi, said the service has noticed a reduction in its revenue since the importation of vehicles was banned from the land borders. The former Minister of Transport, responding to some of our requests and from the stakeholders, promised to take them to the Federal Executive Council, FEC. One of them is how to fully open this border. The Ministry has informed us that the memo has been written to FC, FEC and it was adopted and that it will be given to the new government. He assured us that all the requests were adopted. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Customs Service, NCS SMA Area Command, lamented the huge impact of prolonged border closure on revenue generation at the SEME border. Controller Darren Nadi, Customs Area Controller SEME Command, mentioned the figures during a media briefing on the command's first quarter performance and the handing over of fixed $6 million to the Economic and Finance Crimes Commission, EFCC, as well as the handing over of other seized items to partner government agencies at SEME Badagri. The presidency has stated that uh, there is no presidential approval for salary increases for political office holders and judiciary officers. Media has been agog with reports that the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, RMAFC, is proposing a 114% review of salaries for political holders. According to the Commission, the last time the salaries of public office holders were reviewed was in 2008. In a statement released by Dele Alake, who is a special advisor to President Tinibu on special duties, communication and strategy, says the president has not granted such approval and that no such proposal has been brought to him for consideration. The press statement reads, we have followed with consternation the viral story of the purported 114% increase in the salary of presidents, vice president, elected federal and state political office holders and judicial officers. We state without any equivocation that President Bola Tinibu has not approved any salary increase and no such proposal has been brought before him for consideration. While we recognize that it is within the constitutional remit of the Re Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission to propose and fix salaries and allowances of political office holders and judicial officers, such cannot come to effect until it has equally been considered and approved 
by the president. It is important to note that RMAFC, through its public relations manager, has responded to this fake story being circulated and has already set the record straight. However, this unfounded story gained prominence on social media and in a section of mainstream media, again bring to the fore the danger fake news poses to society and our nation well-being. The misinformation was obviously contracted to ill will for the new administration and slow down the upward momentum and massive goodwill the Tinubu-led administration is currently enjoying among Nigerians as a result of its fast-paced, dynamic, and progressive policies. It is important to reiterate to journalists, to media managers, and members of the public that stories on government activities and policy issues that do not emanate from approved official communication channels should be ignored. Media practitioners are enjoined to at all times cross-check their stories to assure accurate reportage, which is the hallmark of responsible journalism, Adeleke stated. Following the appointment of new service chiefs by President Bola Ahmed Tinibu, dozens of military top brass will have to exit service due to traditional command and control practice. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu had on Monday approved the immediate retirement from service of all service chiefs and the Inspector General of Police, Advisors and Controller General of Customs as well as their replacement with immediate effect. The retired service chiefs are the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awal Gambo, and the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Isiaka Amau. He replaced them with Major General C.J. Musa, Chief of Defense Staff, Major T.A. Lagbaja, Chief of Army Staff, Rear Admiral E.A. Ogala, Chief of Naval Staff, AVMHB Abubaka, Chief of Air Staff, DIG Kayode Egbertokun, Acting Inspector General of Police, and Major General EPA Undiandeye, Chief of Defense Intelligence. The former service chiefs, according to military sources, will be exited with their management team and commandant of three service institutions. Those likely to retire are the principal staff officers, PSOs of the former service chiefs and the commandants of three service institutions. The principal staff officers are mostly members of courses 37 and 38 of Nigerian Defense Academy, NDA. While the new chief of defense staff, Musa, is a member of 38 regular course, the other service chiefs are member of 39 regular courts. According to military sources, all those senior to the CDAs have to make way as he assumes command, so senior military officers from courses 37 and 38 will automatically have to go, including those in the same course 39 who are senior to him. The chief of army staff, Major General, Tauri Lagbaja is a member of 39 regular course of the Chief of Naval Staff. Ogala is a member of course 39, while the Chief of the Air Staff, AVM Hassan Abubakar, is also of course 39. By implication, over 40 generals across the services will leave the stage. For the young ones to step into their shoes in military tradition, a senior cannot take orders from his junior. On entertainment, Nigeria TV show host Ebuka catches Benny by surprise as he adds yet another feather to his cap. The popular reality TV show host trends online as a clip of his recent interview with the former world's richest man, Bill Gates, goes viral. Ebuka, in a cheeky way, announced his interview with Bill, noting that since the Microsoft boss was there to receive him, in New York last year, so he had to return the favor.
The Nigerian police force has warned pranksters to be ready to face the consequences of some of their pranks. According to the police, they will be made to face the threat of the law for any harm their actions cause. The first public relations officer, CSP Olumuyiwa Adejobi, who issued the warning on Thursday night, said that the activities of the pranksters create more problems for the police and security management than what the pranksters gain from such pranks. Adejobi said the personnel of the force operating across the country should not be blamed for killing any innocent person by any chance they shoot any pranksters seen with a gun, be it dummy or a real one, as a person might be taken for an armed robber or criminal before confirming the kind of gun with him. And that's where we wrap it up for today. Do keep a date with us next week. I am Anna Se Thanks for joining us.